I am currently living for my ficus collection, the ficus species in my plant collection, Plant Friends. I feel like this has been such an overlooked genus. And I know that you might balk at that because technically the ficus lyrata, the fiddle leaf fig is like one of the most photographed, discussed houseplants out there on the market. But there is so much more to this genus beyond the ficus lyrata, the fiddle leaf fig. I feel like the fiddle leaf fig gets all the hype, but there's so many other species in this genus that we should all be caring for in our homes because they're easy, they're gorgeous, they're colorful. I have completely fallen head over heels for these plants. I've spent the last few months cultivating a bunch of ficus in order to put this episode together for you to empower you to understand everything you need to know to have ficus thrive under your care and grow a tree in your house. So welcome. Welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives by doing so. I'm Maria, former plant killer turned happy plant lady, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, your new best plant friend. On Growing Joy with Plants, you'll find conversations about houseplant care, gardening tutorials, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hello, plant friends. Welcome to Growing Joy with Plants. If you're new here, I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. If you are returning, I'm so thankful you keep showing up and growing with me, growing plants, growing yourself alongside me. I am deeming this month ficus February. We are celebrating the ficus in this month. One of my new favorite genus, genera. And we're celebrating with the Growing Joy with Leaf Joy mini series on the podcast that's happening once a month in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy Houseplants. It's going to be on the podcast this episode. And then there's a companion video on YouTube where we show the visuals of all the plants we talk about. And I also give a propagation tutorial for ficus. So if you want a visual companion to this podcast, you can also go click the link to my YouTube channel and check out our ficus video over there. And special thanks to Proven Winners Leaf Joy for making this really fun mini series of genus deep dives happen for you this year once a month. So excited. So why are you obsessing over ficus, Maria? You might be asking. Why all of a sudden are we talking about ficus and we're so excited? Well, let me tell you, plant friend, there are multiple reasons why I'm really loving the ficus. Reason number one, in my opinion, the ficus is your best bet at having a tree in your house. I often hear from listeners and friends that they want some sort of large sculptural plant that's taller than our general like one foot, you know, house plant to take up space in a big entry hall or a big window, right? Obviously, fiddly fig is known for that. But there are so many different options in the ficus genera that grow really fast if you give them the right conditions and will become trees. You can have a rubber plant tree in your house. You can have a weeping fig tree in your house. We're going to get into the plant Latin and what those species are in a bit. But I just feel like ficus are an easier to care for genus than palm because I feel like the other kind of tree option is to have a variety of palms. And I'm not throwing shade on the palms. We have a whole care guide on them as well. But I just feel like there's a much larger variety and they're hardier, in my opinion. Most of the plants are hardier than their palm brethren. So if you want a tree in your house, particularly I want a pink tree, which I am growing, one of my ficus plants, I'll tell you about a little bit later in this episode. But if you want a tree in your house, ficus is a great option. Number two, and the real reason why I am really obsessed, but this is going to be kind of a deep cut. So bear with me if you are not an Office fan. But if you are an Office fan like I am, I am a diehard Office fan. I have watched the entire series probably seven times at this point. You know that Michael Scott has a ficus benjamina, a weeping fig in his office for the entire duration of the series. It's like four feet tall. It's in the corner of his office. If you've watched the show, you know what I'm talking about. I want to give a shout out to the Office Ladies podcast. 
that's how much of an office nerd I am that I listen to the companion podcast, the watch along podcast. But anyway, they actually track the plants throughout the series, which I think is really fun. It's my secret dream to be their plant consultant for their podcast. So ladies, if you're listening, I love you. (laughs) Please let me come on your show and talk to you about all the plants in the office. Because have you ever done that plant friends? Have you ever like rewatched a show or started watching a show? And all of a sudden, after you get into your plant, care obsession like all you can see on set is the plants for me like when I watched Will and Grace all I could see is the big Boston fern in the middle of Will and Grace's apartment or in the office all I could see is the ficus benjamina I just think that's so interesting (laughs) you get so fixated on like how are they caring like how is that Boston fern alive like are they spritzing it is there humidity you know and particularly with this ficus benjamina in the office It's in a dark corner. So I'm kind of curious to whether or not that ficus would have actually lived in Michael's office if it was real. But I digress. Sorry, I'm talking about the office too much, but I'm going to live my Michael Scott dreams now because I am the proud owner of multiple weeping figs that I plan on growing very big and tall, just like his office plants. And they're in my office as well. Another reason I'm obsessed with ficus particularly the ficus elastica or the rubber plant, is the insane variety of variegation and colors that this species comes in, the ficus elastica. The rubber plant also is a really easy plant to take care of. It's a great beginner plant, in my opinion. I love it. And it comes in so many different colors. At this moment in my office, I have varieties of the rubber plant that are cream, pink, lime green and dark green. Like there are so many different opportunities for you to bring texture and color into your plant collection by popping a couple of these little rubber plants in. Like it's amazing. I'm staring at the ficus Belize, my absolute favorite ficus of my entire collection. It is bright pink plant friends. The leaves are bright pink. And you know, if you know me, if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, or like if you know my visual brand, you know that hot pink is my power color. I almost exclusively wear hot pink. I love hot pink. My whole desk is pink. And so obviously I always look for pink plants and the ficus Belize is my new favorite pink plant. So anyway, I digress. And also on that YouTube video I was talking about, I propagate the ficus Belize in a tutorial. So in case you are interested. So anyway, those are some reasons why I love the ficus. And now I want you to love the ficus as much as I do. So let's dive into how to care for ficus. These are gonna be general ficus, you know, the common fig care guides so that when you bring a ficus home, you're going to be able to successfully care for it and see it thrive and grow like gangbusters in your house. If you give these plants the light and the environment that they want, they will grow so fast for you. My plants are already growing so much. So here's a high level overview of the genus. So ficus, which is also sometimes called the common fig, it's a temperate species native to Southwest Asia and the Mediterranean region from Afghanistan to Portugal. They grow tall, like I said, so they love to soak in the sun. I have pictures in the video, the companion video to this, but I never will forget when I visited Mickey Hargitay Plants in LA in 2019, they have a 40-foot fiddle leaf fig tree on their front of their property. Like ficus want to grow tall and be at the top of the overstory and soak in the sun. So let's dive right into light care. So Ficus love light. I have found personally that I haven't found a light exposure that my ficus don't like yet. So I'm going to say you want to put your ficus in bright light or at least bright indirect light, medium light. Do not put them in low light. They're not going to grow at least. They're kind of hardy, so they might like hang in there with you, but they're not going to grow. So you want to put your ficus in your sunny windowsills, under grow lights. All of my ficus are under grow lights right now. The only thing I will say is watch for scalding. So with light, Figaro, my fiddly fig tree, is the heart of my plant collection. He was the first plant that my husband, Billy, got me. So if you've been an OG listener, you know that my husband and I, when I got into plant care, kind of went through a bit of a rupture because I got so into plant care so fast. I think like episode 20 or something on the podcast is... Billy actually joining me on the podcast to talk about going on a plant pause because Billy asked me to go on a plant pause, but go listen to that episode if you're interested in that. Anyway, Figaro, my fiddly fig tree, my ficus lyrata was the first plant that Billy gave me. And so it's kind of been the first hour first plant. The rest of my plant collection is my plant collection, but Figaro is our first plant. He was a stem tip cutting when Billy got him for me. So we had like, you know, six very small leaves, like three or four inches. 
I had him on my windowsill. He was fine growing, but all of a sudden I got the Soltech Grow Light. You know, they're a sponsor of the podcast. I love them. We have discount codes if you're interested, but I have three or four of the Soltech lights in my house. And I put Figaro under the Soltech light. And when I put Figaro under the Soltech light, this plant grew. I'm not kidding you, plant friends. His leaves like tripled in size. All of a sudden, his leaves went from four inches to like 12 inch huge fiddle shaped leaves that you see on the internet. And that was directly in response to giving him more light. So with ficus, you want to, I feel like, give them more light than less light. Because once again, we usually overestimate the amount of light that we have in our houses and not underestimate. So you want to put your plants, you want to put your ficus particularly in, let them bask in the light of your windowsills or your grow lights. But be careful because what happened was Figaro grew so fast. He grew so much because I was giving him the light that he grew taller and taller and taller. And all of a sudden, his leaves ended up getting too close to the grow light. And he ended up getting phytotoxicity, I believe is what it's called, like little dark spots on his leaves. So he got some scalding. And then I just had to raise the light to kind of accommodate that. So just keep your eyes peeled as your plants are growing because you're putting them in bright light that they don't get scalded. Also with variegation and color, because this genus has so many different variegation opportunities for you to bring home. Rule of thumb, if a plant is variegated or if it's colored, like my ficus belize, which is pink, or my, I have a variegated ficus benjamina, which has a lot of white in it, there's less green, like, real estate on the leaves for the plant to photosynthesize. So generally, rule of thumb, colorful leaves or variegated leaves are going to need more light than their general non-variegated sisters, right? So if you choose the variegated options for ficus, just make sure that you got to give it probably a little bit, it'll take a little bit more extra light because it needs a little bit more to photosynthesize, if that makes sense. Another thing with light, phototropism is when plants turn their leaves towards the sun in order to be as efficient as possible to receive the light, right? Because plants make their food through receiving light and doing photosynthesis. So plants eat light. That's very important to remember. So I noticed this with Figaro, my ficus lyrata, my fiddle leaf fig. The other day, I don't know if you might have seen on my Instagram stories, but I noticed that my fiddle leaf fig, all of his leaves were facing my Western facing window. And I had my husband pick him up and turn him around and he had like a complete bald spot. So in order to avoid that, you want to rotate your pots like once every couple of weeks so that the plant doesn't like have all of its leaves move towards the sun and then the plant might tip over because it's going to get heavy on one side. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And I think that's all I want to tell you about light for right now. Ficus like light. (laughs) That's kind of the end story of the light section. So let's dive into watering. So you want to mimic outdoors, which is water thoroughly, but not frequently. You know, they're going to get a rainfall. They're going to get a deep watering. And then ficus like no wet feet. So ficus do not want to sit in swampy conditions. They do not want to sit in super wet soil. You want fast draining soil for your ficus. You want to give it a very thorough water. You want the soil to get saturated. You want the extra water to drain out the bottom of the pot. And then with my ficus, what I have found, they can handle drying out a little bit. So I I normally let like the first inch of the soil dry out or like my first knuckle, like if I put my finger in the soil, like to my first knuckle, I let it dry out and then I water them again. So this isn't like the alocasia where, you know, they need... You know, in last month's episode, we talked about how alocasia need like more, they don't like to dry out. Like ficus, you can kind of go for a while. I mean, Figaro, my fiddly fig tree, like I have, I've let go for like two or three weeks, probably just because I've forgotten to water him and he doesn't mind drying out. You'll notice when they dry out, if their leaves get a little droopy or, or look a little wrinkly. But I would say let that first top layer of the soil dry out and then give another really good water. Another thing with watering that I'm putting in the watering section is making sure that their leaves are clean. So when you're watering the plants, check the leaves. These big leaves of the ficus elastica or the ficus lyrata, they are total vectors for dust, right? And if there's dust, it's going to like clog the stomata. It's going to affect photosynthesis. So once a quarter, I like to put all of my plants in the shower and I let the shower water like just kind of wash all the leaves clean. You can also take a damp towel or you can take microfiber gloves and wipe your leaves clean. Do whatever you want. (laughs) Just make sure that those leaves don't get covered in dust because, you know, we've all been to a friend's house who doesn't take very good care of their plants and you run your finger across one of their leaves and it's like a total streak of dust. So make sure that the other thing I've noticed within the genus is the thickness of the leaves 
varies. Like ficus elastica rubber plant, those leaves are thicker than the ficus benjamina, the weeping fig. And I think that this also has to do with how much water, like how sensitive the plants are. So I've noticed that the ficus benjamina need more water than the ficus elastica. And I think because they can kind of retain more water in their leaves. So that was just another kind of observation I've made as I've been caring for the plants. With humidity, if you want your ficus to thrive, if you want to set your ficus up in like the best optimal conditions, you're going to want to put them in 60 to 80% humidity because that's the best rule of thumb for all houseplants. I'm sitting at my office right now. I don't have my humidifier running today and it's 25% humidity in my office, which is atrocious. But my ficus are doing okay in 25% humidity, right? So ficus are more tolerant of humidity. You know, I'm always going to suggest that you have a humidifier or try and up your humidity as much as possible if you want your plants to thrive, if you don't want browning edges on your plants, which a lot of people struggle with, particularly in the winter, but they tend to be more hardy. I'm not going to say that you need to up the humidity for ficus. I've never had my ficus lyrata with a humidifier on it because it's always been in my living room, which we can't humidify because it's too large. Long story, whatever. We don't need to get into that. Anyway, my ficus have never really had extra levels of humidity and they're doing fine. In terms of fertilizer, I always say fertilize when you see new growth. So houseplants don't really go through the seasons the way our other plants do, particularly mine because a lot of mine are under grow lights. So if you see your ficus growing, give it fertilizer, right? Give it some extra nutrients to support the plant as it pushes out new leaves. You see online only fertilize in the growing season in the spring and summer, but the quote unquote growing season for houseplants sometimes happens in the winter. Particularly, I'm looking at my ficus Belize right now and it is putting out three new leaves. So I will fertilize this plant to make sure that she has what she needs to keep growing for me and giving me more gorgeous pink leaves, which I'm obsessed with. Let's talk about pruning a little bit. A note on shape, you can kind of treat ficus like bonsai in a way that you can't with other genera because ficus grow faster. So they like are a tree, right? They're going to grow into a tree shape. You can pinch the top of the tree to get more shoots. So this is what I did. And I demonstrate this on the video, the companion video on my YouTube channel, if you're interested in, in actually like watching a tutorial. But basically, I got my ficus Belize and it's just one stalk. It's one stem with a bunch of leaves going off of it. But I want a big bushy plant with three or four shoots, right? That have a lot of leaves. I want it to be bushy and robust. So instead of letting the main stem that I got keep growing, I pruned that stem, rooted that stem. And now I'm seeing that there's lateral growth happening. So when you prune a plant at the top, it actually triggers hormones to increase lateral growth. That's the bushy sideways growth. So I'm doing that with most of my ficus because before I train them to grow big and tall and strong, I want them to become really bushy and I want them to have a lot of different shoots. I don't just want one measly shoot. So you can kind of treat it like a bonsai where you prune in different areas to kind of train the plant to get bushier or to get skinnier. Also note that ficus has this like toxic latexy type goo ooze that comes out. So if you're going to be pruning ficus, wear gloves. And that is toxic to pets and you can have skin irritation, just FYI. Okay, let's talk about troubleshooting when it comes to ficus. Here are some things that people have written me about that I wanted to touch base on. Ficus is known for leaf drop, particularly the weeping fig, ficus benjamina. So ficus generally do are known to be a little finicky and a little sensitive. They don't like to be moved around a lot. They don't like drafts. You see this a lot with fiddly figs where like people spend $250 on a big, big, big fiddly fig tree. They put it in their entry hall near a door, near a drafty window, and then the fiddly fig will drop all of its leaves. It doesn't like drafts. It doesn't like getting moved. It doesn't like being in the dark, right? So if you're doing any of those things, you're probably going to see leaf drop. It doesn't like big changes in temperature, right? So if you have it near a drafty window, be careful. Mine is near a drafty window and I have to be careful with it in the winter, because I'm scared that it's going to get a little like shocked with a little bit of a freeze. It could drop leaves for a change in humidity. It could drop leaves for a change in light. So if you move homes, be prepared that your ficus might drop some leaves, but they'll grow back, right? So if there's leaf drop, one of my ficus Benjamina is going through some leaf drop because it didn't get watered while I was away for two weeks. And I know that I'm going to let it go through its leaf drop. I gave it a big water and I'm going to prune the tops of the plant 
to instigate that lateral growth for more leaves to come in. I'm not that stressed about it. So leaf drop, the plant can come back from leaf drop as long as you kind of fix whatever happened to instigate the leaf drop. If it's not growing, it probably needs more sun. And if it has brown spots on the top, that's probably a sign that it's getting too much sun. So just be careful with sun scalding, like I talked about with Figaro, what happened when it grew too close to the light. And then it does have that toxic latexy type <laughs> substance that oozes out of the stem when you prune it. So make sure that you're wearing gloves. So those are just my kind of like PSAs and some troubleshooting that you see. So now I would love to dive into the different species that I'm caring for and things that I've noticed between the different species and kind of run you down some of my favorite plants in my collection. Before we dive into that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Proven Winners Leaf Joy. All of the ficus that I have in my collection right now, with the exception of Figaro, my fiddly fig tree, who I've had forever, are courtesy of Proven Winners Leaf Joy, the houseplant line that I'm obsessed with. They are the sponsor of this video. They are the sponsor of the mini series, Growing Joy with Leaf Joy, where we're doing these genus deep dives. I'm so excited to partner with them. They are growing plants in the highest quality. Something that I love particularly about their ficus is their Klingon line. Let me walk you through it. So I alluded to my Michael Scott dreams to have my ficus benjamina, but the ficus benjamina, the weeping fig, is known for leaf drop. And so I never brought one home previously, even though I've watched The Office and known about this plant for many years, because I didn't want to deal with leaf drop. Proven Winners Leaf Joy has actually cultivated a line of ficus that are called Klingon. They've actually cultivated varieties of the ficus that are not as susceptible to leaf drop. They're more leaf drop resistant. And I have to say, I have multiple pots of this ficus benjamina, the Klingon variety that they've been growing. And I'm really impressed. I left for five weeks. I had a plant sitter come. My plant sitter couldn't get into my house for the last two weeks. So my plants kind of had a drought snap. And my ficus benjamina are doing pretty dang good. I feel like normally that would have been the end of days for them. But this Klingon variety, they really are resistant. I'm very impressed with it. They have so many different varieties of so many different colorful ficus that I'm about to run you through. But Leaf Joy is really doing houseplants at a much higher level. I just got back from visiting their greenhouses in the fall. I am so blown away by the work that they're doing. They're selecting only the best genetics, like I mentioned, with this Klingon lime that they have. They're growing them in a state-of-the-art, fancy-schmancy European greenhouse. Their plant tags have real scientific Latin names, care guides, and they're making plants with your success in mind, which is a huge part of why they partnered with me on this mini-series to make sure that their plant consumers are actually getting educated on how to take care of their plants. So next time you're at your favorite garden center, look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy plant tags or ask if they carry Leaf Joy in store. You will not be disappointed. You can find your local Leaf Joy dealer at provenwinners.com. And when you take a Leaf Joy plant home, you better let me know what you got. All right. So let's dive in to species. I already talked about the ficus lyrata. It's definitely like the Instagram sexy ficus, most famous ficus. It's also a little bit more finicky. It's a little bit more of a sensitive Sally. But I got to say, my ficus lyrata I've had for five years. It's growing. I've never given it humidity. I've let it experience periods of drought when I've forgotten to water it. And it, Figaro is just trucking along for me. So I love it. And it, so responsive to light. I gave him more light and he's so much more happy. Okay, let's talk about some of the ficus benjamina options that I have. So one of my favorites is the ficus benjamina Anastasia. It's part of that Klingon line, so it's more resistant to leaf drop. All of the ficus benjamina are easy to grow figs that you can keep like pruned in the form of a small little bush or you can let grow to that huge tree that I talk about with Michael Scott in his office. This plant, the ficus benjamina anastasia, has gorgeous white variegation on all of the leaves in such beautiful patterns, particularly on the outside of the leaves. So this plant needs a little bit more light than its green counterparts. But I think it's so beautiful and I just love, it's so delicate. The ficus benjamina leaves are just so delicate and dainty and beautiful and I'm just having so much fun growing them. The other ficus benjamina that I have that I am like totally obsessed with is a plant called the ficus benjamina twilight. Plant friends, its variegation, there's no white on the leaves. Its variegation is this minty light green and dark green leaves. It is so sexy. It is so cool. I have that plant in my bookshelf. So I'm actually 
continually pruning it to allow it to stay small and bushy. Whereas the Anastasia, I'm going to let grow tall. Um, But I love both of them. And they have multiple, you can check on Proven Winners website, but they have like multiple different varieties of ficus benjamina. And I love them all so much. Okay. The next plant that I had never heard of before is called the ficus cyanthistipula. I can't pronounce it, (laughs) but I believe it's called cyanthistipula. Its nickname is the African fig. It does grow figs, and apparently it's nicknamed the African fig. Oh, and apparently the epithet science, the stipula, means cup, and the fig apparently like resembles a bowl. So that's just a fun fact. But this plant, it's all green. It has huge glossy leaves that kind of like cup as well, like the leaves themselves cup, but it is like bush tree vibes, hardcore. It's got big leaves. I would say that my leaves on my plant are four inches long and it's just a very dark, glossy, green plant. There's like no frills about it, right? There's no variegation. There's no white. But for my plant collection to give like a big, nice, stable, anchored green look amidst all of the variegation that I have, particularly with the ficus, it's been really nice. And it's a plant that I had never heard of before. And I've really enjoyed adding it to my collection because I didn't know about it before Proven Winner sent it to me. The other thing with the ficus cyanthus stipula is because it's dark green, because it's no frills, it's hardy. So you can get it and I think it can tolerate lower light. It's not going to drop its leaves. Like it to me feels like a much hardier, just like stable salt of the earth kind of plant, if you know what I mean. Okay, now let's talk about ficus elastica. This is where I'm really diving into my obsession. I kind of can't believe I've never had them in my collection before until now. I'm kind of like mad at myself. (laughs) I've had plants for seven years. How have I never had ficus elastica before? Because it's so good. So I have multiple different types of ficus elastica. Let me walk you through them. All right. So let's start with the basic most just the one that doesn't have variegation in my collection is called the Ficus Elastica Abidjan, A-B-I-D-J-A-N. This is my basic rubber plant, but the leaves are so dark. They're almost black. It's really beautiful. They're like a deep, dark green, glossy, thick, succulent leaf. And then the sheath, which is like the little covering that covers the leaf, like as new leaves grow and protrude from the plant, is bright red. So it's very dramatic. It's a very dramatic, glamorous kind of diva plant, the Ficus Elastica Abijan. It's just moody. Like I know goth gardening is something that's been trending. Apparently, I've seen it on Instagram. If you are a goth gardener, if you are interested in goth gardening, I would say get the Ficus Abijan because the leaves are so dark green, it's almost black. Okay. The ficus teneke, this is one that you've probably seen online or at your garden center already. It has multicolored leaves. Their leaves are green and yellowish. So it's kind of like a cream variegation. It's so beautiful. And then there are touches of pink and the sheath is pink. So it's really beautiful to watch the new growth because you see the pink, the cream, the light green, and then the as the leaf matures, it turns dark green. So I love the Teneke. That's a great plant. The Ficus Elastica Chloe is your classic green plant. However, the Chloe has pink sheets and pink veins. So on the underside of the leaf, the like main vein that runs up and down the leaf is pink. So like I said, I'm obsessed with pink. I love any opportunity to have pink in my plant collection. And I love the clo- that the Ficus Elastica Chloe is kind of a more subtle pink pop without being like an entirely pink plant, which is the Ficus Elastica Belize. I know I've talked about this already. I feel like it's me as a plant. Like if I was to pick a plant, <laughs> It's tricolor. It has a hot pink, cream, and green. It is so stunning. I can't stand it. The new leaves that come in are like bright, bright, bright pink. And then as the plant leaves mature, the pink becomes a little bit more subtle. But I'm looking at the newest leaf of my plant and it looks stained. Like it almost looks like I dipped it in Kool-Aid or something. So I think overall, the ficus elastica is the one that's kind of tickling me the most. Like, I'm so excited to have added the elastica to my collection. I think the elastica too, the rubber plant, are the hardiest plants of the ficus kind of genera because the benjamina, the weeping fig, is going to be a little bit more sensitive. Even if you get a Klingon variety, the leaves are thinner, right? It needs to get watered more. It might be more sensitive to humidity. The fiddly fig is also, you know, 
terrifying. It's terrifying when a fiddle leaf fig goes through leaf drop. But I think ficus elastica, they're affordable plants, right? They're easy to care for. You can prune them. You can keep them small. You can let them grow big. I'm a fan plant, friends. What can I say? So that is my ficus roundup for you. Put them in light. Let them dry out. They're pretty low maintenance plants, to be honest with you. Obviously, the Benjamina is going to need a little bit more moisture, a little bit more humidity than the others. But I have fallen in love with this genus. I am surprised. I was not expecting for this to be the genus that I am like so obsessed with, you know, at the beginning of our partnership, Proven Winner sent me 36 plants to my house, you know, because we did alocasia, we're doing ficus this month, we're doing calathea next month. So I've been growing a lot of new plants. And I kind of can't believe that of all of these fancy plants sent to my house, it's the ficus elastica that I'm like jonesing for so much. So anyway, thank you Proven Winners Leaf Joy for partnering with me on this episode. Thank you for sending me these gorgeous plants. Thank you for introducing me to the me version of a plant, the Ficus Elastica Belize. Um if you guys are interested for visual a visual companion to this episode, you can go check out the YouTube. We also have a visual companion on the YouTube for Alocasia. I've completely revamped the YouTube. Really high quality, really informative videos to the caliber of this podcast. And I hope they all help you on your journeys to keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you for tuning in today. It means so much to me that I get to be part of your planty journey. If you like what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. We have so many incredible interviews and solo episodes on incredible houseplant and gardening topics that you will not want to miss this year. And while you're over there in the podcast player subscribing, why don't you click over to the review section of Growing Joy with Plants and leave us a review. Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so thanks in advance. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got so many options for you. First, I highly recommend you taking the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's free. It's super fun. It takes three minutes to complete. At the end of the test, you're going to get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you and your lifestyle, inspired by your results. The links are in the show notes. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, I have so many free downloads on my website that I think could help you, like the Understanding Natural Light download or nine different ways to green up your office space. If you'd like to support the show monetarily and help me bring the show to as many people as possible for free, you can head to our Patreon link in the show notes to learn more about our offerings. And finally, I invite you to come hang out with me and continue the planty conversation on social media, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm growing joy with Maria. My DMs are always open if you have requests for topics or ideas for the show. Thank you again for listening. It is truly my honor and delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy.